Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we looked at how to put together a model quickly uh, using Keras and uh, train the model, save the H5 file, which is the trained model weights, and convert that into ONNX model. And then we used ONNX runtime to run the, to perform inference. And then we used uh, model.predict for Keras to run the inference and we compared the results. And the results were almost identical. Well, the results are identical as a result. Even the probabilities for individual classes that we tried were almost identical. And it was an image classification example. And again, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't watched that video, I definitely recommend you going back to that one and the one before where we talked about what ONNX is. And again, hit the subscribe button while uh, you're watching these videos because you'll be notified of future videos like these. And while you're hitting the subscribe button, try to find the thanks button to be generous. Okay, now getting back to today's tutorial, we are going to build on what we learned in the last couple of videos, which is how to save this uh, trained model into uh, ONNX and then use ONNX for inference, except in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that for semantic segmentation, although the process is very similar. Uh, but I'll cover a couple of uh, steps in terms of how to quickly train your own semantic segmentation model, especially for this binary uh, segmentation case, and then uh, and then save it to ONNX and then perform the inference. So I'm not going to waste a lot of your time, hopefully, by showing uh, uh, too many basics, uh, especially for the regular subscribers who probably already know a bunch of that uh, bulk of it. Okay, without wasting any time, let's jump into our spider IDE. As usual, I am going to save uh, these files into my GitHub and the link will be provided down below as part of the description. So you can go through this at your own time. But uh, again, I'm going to use a data set that is by these guys. So let me click on it. Oh, it's open down here. So if you look at this data set, uh, this is uh, again, electron microscopy data set of uh, mitochondria. You have raw images and you have uh, and you have uh, the labels. And when, I, when you download it, you, these images are pretty large. So let me open them in pretty large in the sense, large for neural network training. And let me move this a bit down so you can see also my image J. I usually use image J, Fiji uh, image J, uh, to visualize scientific images, uh, it, it's, it makes it very easy to quickly investigate what's going on. So here you have uh, eight bit images. If I go to image type, these are eight bit images. And if I go to my label, these are probably also eight bit images right there where the background pixel value is zero. If you keep an eye on the screen, like right there, background is zero and the peak pixel value, I mean, the, the object value is 255. It can be one, it, can, it doesn't matter what object values you have. But this is the data set I'm using and each image is 1024 by 768. So I need to take care of cropping them into the appropriate sizes and then loading them into uh, my neural network. So again, I'll go through all of that in a pretty quick uh, way. And I have written my own unit model. If you look at simple unit, again, I'm going to share both files with you guys. So I have simple unit model.py and the file I'm working with right now. So the simple unit model is, again, I shared this in the past. I've used this many times in past videos, so you probably already have it if you are a regular viewer, but otherwise you'll find it right here. Uh, all I did is define a few convolutional blocks uh, right there, uh, expansive path and the contraction path, uh, contraction and the expansives to define my unit where we do the concatenation and all that. I explained this many, many times in my unit video, so I'm not gonna go through that. But key is uh, it takes in these images and outputs uh, a, a single uh, a binary value, right? So the probability at every pixel. If you're looking for multi-class, then look up my old videos on multi-class uh, semantic segmentation. Okay, so th with that information, let's jump into what we are here for. So we are going to import our model. We are going to import NumPy, matplotlib. I'm going to import a library called Patchify. I used this many times in the past in my videos, so not much explanation will be given here, but I'm gonna use that to patch uh, extract the patches of uh, desired size from my large images. And I'm going to import a library called TIFF file because this is a multi-dimensional TIFF that I just showed you. 
Okay, so let's import all of these libraries. And now let's import my large image stack, which is the 12 training images. By the way, out of 165 images or so, I just took 12 and using for training. So we can also see how using small data sets, how good of a results we will get. Usually you need large data sets, like all 165 images probably. But this is okay. For our demonstration purposes, this works fine. So let's go ahead and read that and large image stack, you can see I have 12 images, each 768 by 1024. These are all 8-bit, so you have the values going between 0 to 255. And let's also do exactly the same with our masks, and masks should be identical in terms of the size, but the values, we already know the values go uh, between 0, to, well, the values are 0 and 255. I'm going to divide my images and masks into smaller patches, uh, 256 by 256 patches using the Patchify library. So that's exactly what I'm doing. For every image, I am going to apply Patchify on my large image and uh, of size 256 by 256 and then move on to 56 pixels, do the same and so on. I'm doing that both for my images and for my masks. So at the end of this, well, here I'm only doing that for images. So I could have been more efficient by combining, by defining a function to do this and then applying it to my images and masks. But I was being lazy as you can see, because I repeated the same code down here, which is absolute no for um, good, uh, good uh, coding practices. Okay, so my images, if I go here, now I divided my 12 images of 768 by 1024 into 144 images of size 256 by 256 and expanded the dimension by one so it's ready for my neural network. I am doing exactly the same for my masks and once the masks are red then I am going to print out some information so you can see this uh, information on the screen. So my pixel values in the mask are 0 and 1. Well, they were 0 and 255. I just divided them by 255. So uh, 0 is background, 1 is uh, mitochondria in this example. You can just leave it to 0 and 255. Yeah, it's up to you. But we are going to convert them into, let's see. Uh, well, let's let's move on to the next ta uh, task, which is uh, splitting the images into training and testing data set. So there you go, training and testing. And I have already scaled my images to zero to one. So I'm not doing that uh, after my splitting right here. Okay. So I have 108 256 by 256 images for training, 36 images for validation or testing. And I'm defining my image height with the number of channels because that's exactly what goes into when I import my model right here, height, width, and channels. And I am getting my model right there and my model get model. So I define my model and there you go. So far we just defined our model for some uh, for our unit. Okay now let's look at a few random images. Whenever I do semantic segmentation I always perform the sanity check to make sure that my images and masks are lining up okay. So let's randomly load a few images. Yep great. So we haven't messed up anything. That's good but we only have a handful of images so let's go ahead and try to generalize it by adding some transformations. Yeah, uh, I am going to use image data generator and add a few random transformations with uh, height, shift range, shear range, zoom range. Again, these are all data augmentation techniques. You probably know that. But I am going to do exactly what I do with my images. Same thing you have to do with your masks. You need to be very careful with this because this is semantic segmentation. So you stretch your image by 20%, you need to do exactly the same with your masks. And how to ensure that? By actually, um, where is it? Uh, mask data augmentation. I thought I actually have a, a pre-processing function. Just a second. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, by, I was trying to find the seed. Yeah, by actually defining a seed, and using exactly the same seed. So all the random transformations are not random. They're random, but not truly random, meaning they're different between these two. So I define my seed right there, and I am going to use the seed later on when I'm actually calling the, uh, fitting the uh, data generator right here. Again, these are all basic stuff. So sorry guys, if you're feeling bored. And we defined our, uh, data generators and now you have your data generator image data generator uh, dot fit and we are fitting it I mean 
basically defining the generators right here and then image validation and image generators right there and we are fixing our seeds so everything is predictable and now go ahead and define my image generator uh, image and mask generator because now I'm actually I have image generator and mask generator I'm combining them into one and probably you're wondering you tuned in to learn about how to convert this to ONNX I am going through an exercise of the best practices to train a unit model for semantic segmentation if you have limited training data we are going to train a model and take h5 file if you are impatient forward a little bit and see if I am getting to the ONNX part so uh, let's spend a few more minutes so we have validation now I'm actually combining the image and mask generator into one like by zipping them so let's go ahead and do that so both are provided to me when I call it at the same time so I don't have to take care of these two independently okay so now I define that so now I have my image generator my generator is basically a generator that gives me image and mask using independent generators right there okay same thing I'm doing with my validation generator and again a whole bunch of operations it, did we mess up anywhere the only way to check is visually uh, plotting a few of these and making sure okay so this is my augmented image image mask they look to be very nicely correlated I'm super happy again another one so you have your uh, mitochondria 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 so yep that is also working fine let's do one more one two three four these are all augmented images by the way so everything is working fine now we are set, uh, ready to train a model and you know how to do that so I'm defining my batch size I'm defining my steps per epoch as total images divided by the batch size and model.fit and you can do I don't know let's just do 10 epochs let's not do all 10 but let's get started so you know that hey this is actually working I trained it for 50 epochs just before this tutorial so we can load it and then continue the discussion I don't want you to stare at the screen well or I don't want to stare at the screen uh, for that long so accuracy is always pretty good but again when you are looking at semantic segmentation if you have this much background accuracy is going to be amazing because your background is also a class you need to look at IOU metric intersection over union so that's a bad habit that I am not uh, I mean a good habit is to use IOU I'm not using that which is a bad habit okay so the model is learning you're getting great accuracy again let's not bet too much on accuracy let's go down and I saved the model I saved the model I think I did <laughs> I hope I did yeah 50 epochs I say I trained it for 50 epochs I saved it as dot h5 and now what now that I have my model let's go ahead and load it so let's start right there load model exactly identical to our tutorial from last time yeah I'm just showing you uh, a semantic segmentation use case and load the model 50 epochs and now when you load the model what do you do let's go ahead and import a random test image and then predict on it how do you predict that you obviously you know uh, it's uh, you get the test input image to the right dimensions yeah to the four dimensions and then you perform uh, model.predict that's what we're doing and because I call this prediction I also added a little extra script right there to only include the uh, pixels with a probability of 0.5 or higher as part of our segmentation otherwise you may get a lot of noise because what uh, eventually what you get from model.predict is a probability output you want to convert that into a binary output that's why I'm putting a threshold of 0.5 okay so let's uh, run all of these and look at the results hopefully they are good after 50 epochs yeah sometimes you'll see some crappy images I don't know yeah <laughs> uh, the left hand side it can use a bit more training images uh, I'm not sure if training a bit more is going to fix this because we are working with limited number of images you cannot augment your way out of great segmentation you need more data at some point but overall it is actually doing a pretty good job ah, that sucks okay overall maybe I can adjust the uh, probability to maybe all of that is like zero point so if I just go to 0 0.7 and only plot this we'll probably get it, it cleans up a little bit yeah 
So uh, anyway, so this is this is what where we are. We saved the we saved the H5 file, and now let's go ahead and convert that into ONNX. So for that we need TF2 to ONNX library. Again, I talked about this in the last tutorial. If you're working with older version of TensorFlow, it would be Keras2 ONNX. Or so let's go ahead and import the dot convert. Let's import our ONNX and uh, let's load the model again. Well. So it's assigned to a new parameter uh, variable loaded Keras model. And how do you convert that into ONNX single line? So if you tuned into this video for how to convert it, sorry guys, this is where the golden nugget is hidden, which is TF2 ONNX dot convert from Keras and whatever the Keras model is, that's it. You have your ONNX model. This is where you can add additional parameters to add any optimization. So here it says function optimizer did nothing. So you can add some optimizations right here. Look at the documentation for uh, for uh, for TF2 to ONNX uh, to add any optimizations right there. Okay, let's go ahead and save the model. Uh, I think I already did that. 50 epochs .onnx right here. So let's go ahead and use it as part of our runtime. So import our ONNX runtime. Again, I'm speeding up because I talked about it in the last tutorial. And for the runtime, we need to define a session, which is similar to defining a model in Keras. So ONNX runtime dot inference session. And these are the input names and your input name and output name. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we are ready to use our session to do the prediction. How do you do the prediction using uh, using this session? It is, uh, uh, my goodness, I'm looking at too much stuff. Yeah, right there. It's basically session.run, your output name, your input name, your input uh, image right there, your input data set right here. And once the result is there, I am going to do exactly what I did for Keras, which is take only the values above 0 0.5. Let's leave it to 0 0.5 for now, uh, both for my uh, both for my ONNX and also for my Keras, yeah? So I'm doing the segmentation using both and I'm pl plotting the results using both. Even if the results are crappy, I expect the same crappiness in both my Keras and ONNX. So let us start from test image random, loading a random image and doing the segmentation. So, okay, well, actually that's pretty good. I, sh I shouldn't have uh, offended my model by calling it crappy, but uh, well, sometimes it gives crappy results. So there you go. But the result, the key here is comparing these two, identical. No difference between these. Let's actually load a one more time to get some bad image. Yeah, they're bad equally uh, between uh, ONNX and Keras. They're bad because I'm using limited training data, by the way, guys. So it's not because unit is bad. Uh, you need a lot more training data to actually, and more training epochs to actually get this thing uh, converged into a good uh, good solution. But look at this. Uh, this is ONNX, that is Keras. You see how even this little dot is showing up right there. That's showing up right here. So I can keep loading these. You can go through all of these again. Uh, maybe adjust the probabilities to 0 0.8 or something. So you can actually get uh, uh, a result that's close to ground truth but the result is very identical between these two. Yeah, between these two, it's pretty much identical. Okay, so this is a semantic uh, example for ONNX. In future, when I learn how to code iOS apps, then I'll try to uh, do something uh, similar by actually converting this into a model that is uh, easy to deploy natively onto iOS, but for now, this is where my ONNX tutorials end, and let's pick up a different topic in the next one. Thank you.